Hello everyone, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. Today we're going to talk about automotive relays, those relays used in cars and motorcycles. We have relays of different shapes, as you can see. And even different sizes. However, all these components are relays, meaning they work the same way as other relays used in other areas, for example, in automation. As is the case with this relay. In other words, we already know how this type of relay works, so we can understand how automotive relays work. However, this time we're going to see how to replace these types of automotive relays with another component. One that allows us to do the same job as the relays, but without them suffering as much wear and tear. This is in case you need to replace them. So, without further ado, let's continue with the video. Okay, before we look at the component that will replace the relays, let's see how an automotive relay works, like these here. First, an automotive relay has four pins, two of which are used for the coil, and two are the normally open contacts. Our relay needs a small current signal delivered by a switch or a push button, like this one here. The relay's operating voltage is indicated on the relay itself. For example, in this case, the relay indicates that it requires 12 volts. However, there are relays that need 24 volts. Now, the switch or push button used to activate the relay will experience very little wear, meaning it will last a long time. However, the relay, which will handle a large amount of current, will suffer a lot of wear and tear, therefore it is necessary to replace it periodically. But this time, we're going to replace our relay with another component that can last much longer than a relay. I'm talking about the MOSFET transistor. These types of components can handle a large amount of current and suffer very little wear. As for the size, you can choose it based on the current you'll be handling. Now, how would a MOSFET transistor work in relation to the previous circuit we just saw? Well, it would be as follows. Here we have the circuit using a MOSFET transistor. We can see that our MOSFET transistor has three terminals, which are gate, drain, and source. Source, drain, and gate. Our transistor requires a voltage signal, and its operation would be as follows. We need a signal, which will be delivered through the switch or push button. This signal will enter this circuit, which consists of two resistors forming a voltage divider. The voltage across R2 will be greater than 10 volts. In this case, it will be 11 volts. These 11 volts are more than enough for the MOSFET transistor to function as a switch, allowing all the energy to flow to the light bulb, motor, or fan. That is to say, we will have approximately 12 volts across the fan or light bulb. This is how the MOSFET transistor would work, replacing one of these relays. However, not all relays work this way. There are relays like this one, which contain an electronic circuit, as you can see. However, our MOSFET transistor can also work in the same way as this electronic board. This is roughly how the circuit would work, or how this electronic board would function. In it, you can see that we have a BJT transistor, which will receive a signal through a microcontroller or an integrated circuit. This signal will activate the transistor and this transistor will activate the relay. 
Now, a MOSFET transistor would work as follows. In the case of a MOSFET, a BJT transistor is also required for switching. Here we have the microcontroller or integrated circuit, which will send the switching signal. Now take into account that integrated circuits or microcontrollers work with fairly low voltages. They can be 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Therefore, we will have two different voltages. Now let's see how the circuit works. First, here we can see that we have 5 volts, which are connected to the base of the transistor through this resistor. This allows the transistor to be switched on from the beginning. This will cause the negative voltage to pass directly to the gate of the MOSFET, switching the transistor off. This leaves the load or light bulb off from the start. That means we need a negative signal here for the transistor to turn on. This will allow the positive signal to pass to the gate, activating the transistor and turning on our fan or light bulb. This is how a MOSFET transistor works with a microcontroller. Okay, so that's the theory. Now let's confirm this operation practically. Okay, here we have our circuit assembled. We can see the 1 kilom resistor and the 10 kilom resistor next to the BJT transistor, as the circuit indicates. We also have the other 1 kilom resistor next to the other 10 kilom resistor and our MOSFET transistor, as shown in this part of the circuit. And we are using a 5 watt light bulb as a load. However, there is a difference with this circuit. In this case, we have just added an LED connected to negative to confirm the operation we described earlier. We stated that a negative signal is required to turn on the light bulb. And with that negative signal, the LED would be off. However, with a positive signal, the LED would be on and the bulb off. This confirms what we mentioned earlier. Well, now we have to put it into practice. Very well, as you just saw, our circuit is working correctly. Here we can see our LED, and when it's on, the bulb is off. And when the LED turns off, the bulb turns on, just as we indicated in the theoretical circuit operation. And with the multimeter, we are measuring the voltage that drops across the light bulb. And as you can see, it's almost 12 volts. Which means the transistor is doing a good job, delivering almost all the voltage to the bulb. And in this way, you can replace an automotive relay like this one here with a solid state relay. Using a transistor. However. I advise you to do several tests before trying to replace one of those relays. Well, guys, that's how the video ends. But don't forget that if you like the video, a like really helps the channel. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.